Welcome to the WCU service orientation. My name is Margarita and I'm a student support coordinator here at WCU. Uh, you can feel free to keep your cameras off if that makes you feel more comfortable, uh, but please know that we are recording the session because we want everyone to have access to the training if they're not able to attend live. Uh, so, so to begin, uh, we'll talk about we see you a little bit and our role on campus. We see you serves as a connector between U of I students like all of you and community organizations in Champaign County. Uh, we see you is also a service recognition program on campus that honors students for their contributions to the community while providing them uh, with support, training, and connection to other like-minded peers. Uh, the WCU program is comprised of four major components, service recognition, a mini grants program, um, training and reflection and project matching. And then our program is also guided by three core values uh, that you as a WCU scholar should emulate. Uh, the first being impact, our WCU scholars are actively engaged in meeting community needs. Experience, we see you scholars gain valuable hands-on experience to build their skill sets and resumes. And community, we see you scholars are connected with other like-minded students supported by a strong community and inspired by peers. Uh, so today, during our time together, we'll be talking about what is service, why is an orientation necessary before you start engaging with the Champaign-Urbana community, commuting, communicating with a community partner, uh, cultural competence and humility, making the most of your experience, and then ending it off with roles and responsibilities for you, your instructor, and your community partner. Um, and we will like we will also leave time at the end for questions. Uh, so throughout the presentation, you're welcome to put your questions in the chat, uh, but we won't answer them till the end of the training today. Uh, so before we, we begin to start us off, I'm inviting you guys to take a moment and reflect. Reflection is a really big part of service and it's gonna be a really big part of this, um, of this training today. Uh, and I invite you all to answer through the chat or feel free to raise your hand and, and talk to us. Um, but take a moment to reflect about why you want to engage in service um, and what injustices, inequities, or community needs you hope to address. Um, we'll give that maybe a couple seconds, a minute or so, see if anyone uh, would like to volunteer any answers or write in the chat. So maybe for a lot of yeah, so maybe for a lot of you, you're doing this for a class or just um, you're interested in learning about the program. That's totally fine. Um, we can move on then to oh wait, someone answered. Awesome, thank you guys for answering. Great to see you're learn, hoping to learn about the surrounding community and how people are working together to solve real world problems addressing issues within the education system and youth development, awesome. Really value finding a volunteer home here in Champaign-Urbana with books to prisoners, nice. And I hope to address health-related community needs or needs related to poverty and learn open to learning how to do so. That's really great, thank you guys for sharing. Uh, taking time to let us know uh, where you're at at the process. Uh, so we'll move on to then to what is service. Um, so I want to know a little bit more about the type of service you've been engaged in previously, or if you haven't, uh, someone already answered um, into service since high school because of the track coach. Awesome. But, um, I I also had some some experience with service in high school. Um, so if you guys would like to take a second to talk about 
what is service and any service you've you might have engaged in um, prior to university or during university in the chat. Or you can unmute yourself and share with the group. So some of you guys have had some experience with tutoring elementary student, students and working at food banks. Religious temples, food and toy drives. Thank you guys so much for sharing your answers on chat. So some of you guys may be familiar already with service. Some of you guys may not, that's totally okay. Um, service in general may have looked like any number of things. Um, it might've involved volunteering at a homeless shelter, doing a community cleanup event with your sorority or fraternity or in your high school or helping with an after school program. Um, it might've also been a requirement. Some of you might've been in the National Honor Society or something you had to do for uh, a certain number of volunteer hours for your RSOs. Um, so service learning, we want to emphasize at WCU, um, we try to look at service a little bit differently here. At WCU, um, we emphasize a difference between volunteering and service. So the difference is volunteering primarily benefits the recipients. Um, so the population or organization you're serving. But service, on the other hand, benefits both the recipient and, and you, the student. And through service, you're not only providing a service that benefits the community, you're also growing and learning and you're benefiting from this experience because you're growing your skills. Um, and this is really done by reflecting on your experience and engaging with the root causes of the need in the community. So you are asking yourself constantly, why is there a need for my service? Um, there is a reason that our service is needed and often it's injustice serving that need or it's injustice that is driving that need. Uh, service with WCU also involves community-defined priorities. So our community partners know what is happening more than anyone in their community. Uh, they assess the need and then they bring in the students such as yourselves to come in and help them address those needs. Uh, to ensure the service we do is effective, students should have an understanding of the historical context of the community they serve before going to volunteer in those places. And by understanding and addressing what a community is asking for, you all can find the best way to provide support while avoiding a sort of savior complex, which is um, when saviorism is a component of, servants, of service, that service is not aimed at justice or autonomy anymore and instead becomes a series of solutions that prioritize making volunteers feel good about themselves. So even though with we see you in your service, you will be benefiting through your own personal development. It's really important to work towards maintaining a reciprocal relationship with your community partner. So you should not think of yourself as, or your service as unidirectional where you're an expert coming in um, into a community and instead uh, your engagement with the community should recognize, respect, and value the knowledge, perspective, and resources. Um, so we want to emphasize again, and you'll be hearing this throughout the presentation, that service learning is going to be mutually beneficial 
a partnership that's mutually beneficial that really focuses on community defined priorities. And this orientation will hopefully give you some tools to feel prepared before you enter your service project. So reflection before, during and after is a really crucial part of service because it can allow you to think critically and learn from this experience and be prepared to enter these spaces, not as an expert, but as a student willing and ready to learn from, from your community members. Um, so here, I will also give you guys a chance if you're comfortable answering some questions in chat or unmuting yourself about making meaning and of reflection, one of the things you wanna do is really reflect on yourself and your own values. So if you would like to share, you know, what communities or identity groups you're a part of and how might this be related to your commitment to service, um, you can do so in the chat. So all this gets back to the topic of reflection, right, which is really critical um, because part of the, the doing service with WCU is making meaning. So before you start doing this service, take time to acknowledge yourself and your values, as well as your own assumptions about what service is and the greater community. And by making meaning, I'm asking you to think about who is the population or organization that you're serving what is the service you are doing and why is that needed and and this all this all brings us back to the questions of why you want to get involved with service and what does it bring to you and also how is your project going to feel meaningful for your own growth and what strengths do you bring that may be useful how would you like to grow further to serve your community or enrich your own life and i think a really important question to to ask yourself in the beginning and at the end of your service is how can you continue supporting your community outside of service work and how can you maintain sort of a um, longer engagement outside of your service with WCU. So our Champaign-Urbana community, a very brief overview. Uh, many of you might've just moved here or um, to this community at the start of your classes. Some of you might have been here for a couple years now or others may have grown up here. Um, but often when we're here on campus, we can really feel separated from the community of which we are a part of. Uh, but either way, Champaign is a very vibrant community and it's not limited to campus. And even though a lot of us call campus our home, there are residents who live in Champaign County year round. Um, and you can read these statistics on your own, uh, but it is a very diverse place. And something that should be highlighted is that over 25,000 residents in our community are immigrants, and that's right around 12% of our population. However, all communities, um, no matter how vibrant, face challenges. In our community, there are nearly 150 people who are living without homes or regular houses, and 33% of immigrants live well below the poverty line, um, and Black people are disproportionately represented among our county's incar incarcerated population. These are some of the challenges, um, but we should never define our community by its deficits. Um, even though the university really sits at the center of Champaign-Urbana, we are uh, more than the university and we're home to many different vibrant communities and different networks. Um, it's a really dynamic group of community members who are working to address the challenges that are present here. And we see you students have actually donated uh, 22,000 and more you know, counting hours of service since 2020. Um, and our students and their partners are working to bring visibility to our community's challenges and triumphs. Um, for example, um, a little bit of what has happened in the past couple of years, uh, our students worked with Uniting Pride to help plan pride rallies and ally trainings. And we also had several students working with DREAM as after school tutors. Uh, so engaging with the Champaign-Urbana community. Um, so as I mentioned before, even though WCU really is that hub that tries to connect Illinois students to community organizations, once we make that match, 
um, you're really going to be working independently with that community organization. Um, and in many cases, the relationship between the university and the surrounding community has been full of tension because researchers come in, uh, do research and leave without carefully planning about continuing and protecting the relationships with local communities um, and community members. So please, please, please take this role very seriously and bring integrity and honesty to your uh, partner communications. And if you ever feel like you're struggling to represent the university ethically, uh, you can always reach out to help for anyone in the WCU program and your student support coordinators. WCU's core values that I had mentioned at the beginning of the presentation should really guide your interactions with community partners, those being impact, experience, and community. Uh, so communicating with your community partner, communication is a really key part of how you're gonna cultivate a mutually beneficial partnership with that organization. Um, so before you're meeting with your community partner, you should prepare, be prepared, do some background research so that you can show up to that first meeting, uh, not completely out of the loop of what's going on in the community or, or with them as an organization. So this can involve, you know, reading their mission statement or browsing, browsing their Instagram or Facebook, any social media pages they may have. Uh, you can also revisit any project description you were you were given. And then next, you want to set some goals for your project. Um, and some of these goals will be set by your community partner naturally. Uh, for example, if they need help building a website, one of your goals is going to be creating a new website. Um, but you should set other goals for yourself too. Um, and um, set goals for the project completion and who you are serving and what resources do you need to meet this, uh, this goal and this timeline. And then finally, you should set goals for yourself. What do you wanna learn from the service project? Um, what do you hope to gain? What skills do you want to grow? What skills do you already have? Um, yeah, so there are key questions for community members um, that are good to have. And before I list any off, I would like to invite you all to write in the chat or raise your hand of what your ideas for initial key questions for your community partners would be. Uh, before you meet with them. So I'll give you guys a minute or so to write in the chat. In the chat. That's a great question. So how do volunteers support your mission? What is the role of volunteers? How does a community partner uh, define that? Great. Is there any other ideas of um, the type of questions you would ask, your initial questions you would ask um, your community partners? Uh, the first meeting is really crucial because it'll set the tone for your entire relationship. Oh, oh. So what caused you to become involved with this organization slash community? What has been your most positive moment or impact since you started your service? Right. And some people are going to be there, are probably going to be at this organization for a really long time. So they're going to have some great insight, some great stories, um, and some really great reasons and why they're there.
Really great answers, you guys. Yeah, so um, so those are really great answers and, are, and other questions that you can ask um, besides after you get to know them a little bit more is how often you would like to communicate with them. Who is the point person for this project that you're gonna be working on? Um, how often uh, do, you, do they expect to meet and talk with you? What platform will that be happening on? Will that be in person, on Zoom, through email? Um, any deadlines? that they're, they're, um, they have in mind? Um, and how will your community partner provide feedback on the progress of the project? Um, so those are other questions that uh, are really good to, to starting the service. And thank you guys for your suggestions in the chat also. Those are really great questions. <laughs> So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Antara Chansalkar and I will be taking uh, this orientation forward from here. Uh, so, uh, we ask that you be responsive and take time uh, to write and proofread your emails uh, when you talk to a community, a community partner uh, about any project uh, before and afterwards. Uh, remember, you are presenting Illinois and you want to make a very good impression. So, uh, to, to remind you, you should receive an email connecting you to the community partner soon. Uh, sometimes a community partner will respond right away and uh, introduce themselves to you. Other times you might need to start the conversation yourself. Uh, if the community partner doesn't respond within two business days, uh, respond and introduce yourself. And lastly, uh, you should try to communicate with your community partner at least once uh, every two weeks. If you have any trouble reaching out to your community partner or can't seem to get the conversation started, uh, reach out to the VCU team. Uh, we can help you start the conversation and get you started. So being responsive is something which is very important when you uh, start working on a community project. Be present. Uh, be present and accountable with your community partner. You should be on time to any meetings that your partner sets and you should give them your full attention by taking notes, asking questions and acknowledging them. You should also be present at any trainings that VCU provides and identify which trainings you might need to meet your specific service goals. So for example, if your partner has uh, tasked you with redesigning the, uh, their website, you might need to learn a new software or some basic HTML coding skills. So you can just find out a training uh, which might help you learn these skills and do that so that you are uh, giving your end goals on time. Be confidential and respectful. Confidentiality brings us back to the idea that VCU scholars pursue ethical service projects. You should respect the confidentiality of the organizations you are working with. Uh, so do not share stories with friends or post photos on uh, social media yeah. without the written permission of your community partner. So this is very important, guys. Being, res uh, being resourceful. Uh, being resourceful and learning new skills if you need to is very important. If you need to learn a new skill, use the resources that are already available to you. LinkedIn Learning is available for free to all the UIOC students uh, through the web store. So take advantage of this resource. And again, as mentioned in the info session, VCU offers mini grants to help you pay for any other trainings you might need. So I'm, as I mentioned earlier, if you need to learn any new software or any technical skills, there are different websites uh, like Coursera, Udemy, etc. So you can use those websites to learn new stuff uh, and our VCU will uh, offer you many grants to help pay for it. Be inquisitive. You should be inquisitive and ask questions. You are not going to know everything about this community organizations or the population you are serving. Asking questions shows that uh, you are dedicated and that you care. Ask questions of your uh, partner and of us, the VCU team. We are always happy to answer your questions, but come to us sooner rather than later. Don't wait until November to tell us that your community partner hasn't reached out to you. Uh, that is going to be a hassle, guys. So 
uh, please reach out to us if you are unable to contact your community partner. And if there is any doubt regarding the project that you need to ask your community partner, please, uh, please just contact them and go through it. Be professional. Uh, hold yourself to a professional standard, even if you are serving remotely. Uh, practice Zoom etiquette, be timely, and respond to emails that your partner sends you. So uh, this is very important. Because if you are expecting the community partner to respond to you properly, you need to be responsive as well. So be culturally humble. So uh, on the chat, you can uh, ask, uh, I, I'm uh, asking you a question. Are any of you familiar uh, with cultural humility? If not, what are your initial thoughts uh, when you first hear the word cultural humility? You can just write it in the chat about what you think they could be. On the slide, you can see a cultural iceberg and then you can take some idea from there as well. While working on a community project, you need to pra uh, practice cultural humility. Uh, cultural humility is a large part of service. Uh, the cultural iceberg is a very good uh, visual representation of this topic. These are things about us that are visible, things that are less visible, and things that are invisible. Much like an iceberg, what's visible is what's floating on the surface of the water. But we know that there is a lot under the surface that we can uh, cannot see. So uh, we might be able to see a person's age or their clothing, but we might not be able to see other things like their wealth, history, or personal values. So we always need to be considerate and humble and empathetic um, about we know uh, about what we know and what we don't know. Okay, we have something on the chat. Understanding that just because your culture does it one way does not mean it's the right way or the only way. Yeah, that is so true. Uh, any other idea that anyone has, please use the chat to uh, respond. Even like if you are working with people, uh, they might be going through some problem or something and you don't know about it. So you always need to be very empathetic about how you deal with people, not making assumptions about a culture you don't know about. Yes, that is true again. I love how you guys are getting, uh, coming up with new ideas. Gaining perspective of other people's values and experiences and seeking to understand with humility. Yes. That's, uh, these are great insights. Let me speak a little bit uh, about what cultural humility is. Uh, cultural humility is a personal lifelong commitment to self-evaluation and self-critic. This means that you are not only learning about another person's culture, but you are also turning a critical eye back on your own beliefs, biases, and cultural identity. Cultural humility also requires that you recognize and try to topple power dynamics and power imbalances, and you are actively working to develop partnerships with people and groups to overcome those imbalances. Uh, finally, cultural humility requires institutional accountability. This means that you are holding whatever institution or group you are working with to those same standards. Key aspects of cultural humility. Uh, this slide puts some of those points into simpler terms. Uh, be open. Be open to learning, open to exploring. Then uh, self-reflection. Work towards a better understanding of yourself and your uh, positionality. That is uh, how your identity shapes your position in the world. Cultural humility also involves a commitment to lifelong learning. We will never know everything and we are committed to constantly learning. 
empathy and compassion for yourself those you are serving for your community partner and your fellow uh, vcu scholars and finally uh, being other oriented which uh, basically means you are uh, taking others needs viewpoints and values seriously another part of cultural humility is to avoid causing harm in order to avoid causing harm you should listen to and apply the knowledge and expertise of community members so you are collaborating uh, with and listening to your partners you are not going into an organization and telling them how they should approach a problem you should never impose your own ideas or expectations onto your community partners uh, second uh, you should check how much authority and power you are given you may be going into a community that you are not a part of so be mindful of how your positionality changes the dynamics of a room finally use language that conveys respect when you talk with uh, uh, and about community members and community partners always err on the side of caution and use someone's title when introducing yourself for the first time or use person cultural competence is a necessary foundation for cultural humility they share char characteristics you can practice uh developing cultural self awareness which means uh, becoming aware of your own cultural norms attitudes beliefs and behaviors identifying and examining your own personal biases stereotypes and prejudices and then considering the impact cultural differences might have on your interactions with uh bipoc communities uh then gaining cultural knowledge being comfortable with not knowing balancing your expert uh, knowledge with being open to learning from the community and their li uh, life uh, experiences being curious about other cultures asking questions reading test uh, texts about other cultures viewing films and uh, documentaries studying another language attending classes and workshops about other cultures etc so uh these are the things that you can do to gain cultural competence so uh there are reflection questions that you can ask yourself before starting a service project to help you check yourself like uh what biases do you have and how might these influence your viewpoints what biases do you need to explore and check uh you may have learned these from your parents your high schools the media or other sources but we all have them and we should all check them many of you might need to ask uh, how white supremacy affects uh, your uh, assumptions about a community organization or a person these are the important but difficult questions you must ask yourself uh, before starting your service projects and some of these questions uh, that are listed you can also ask yourself while doing the community uh, project um, and before as well so uh, the last question which is there what steps can i take to stay committed to a long term community engagement is something which you can ask before starting a project so can you guys please use the chat box to answer the question maybe like what steps would you be taking to stay committed uh, committed to a long term community engagement i think some of you uh, are already working with different community projects so what motivated you to uh, work uh, with that project for such a long time and continue being so interested in that project I think the first thing uh, that I would tell myself is check if you are interested in the project that you have taken probably because interest matters a lot. Oh yes, maintaining open communication with them, checking in once in a while. So like to continue your interest and to keep a check on what work you might have in that project, you just need to keep communicating with the community partner and. Uh, 
get insights about the project these are some of the things that you can do roles and responsibilities uh, these projects are based on the following principles of reciprocity with the explicit understanding of mutual benefit between and among all parties students instructors and community partners play an important role in facilitating a collaborative process to enable participants to combine their knowledge skills and resources to accomplish more uh, together than they could on their own so first one on the slide is uh, the responsibilities and the roles uh, that uh, roles will be students instructors and community partners and the responsibility of a student is display high levels of professionalism motivation and initiative when engaging with community partners uh, become familiar with organization and communities they service have a clear understanding of their goals fulfill their community uh, commitment to the community partner so as a student these are the things that you can follow then um, the responsibilities of the instructor will uh, would be teach a class connected to the service experience encourage reflection throughout the semester support students in their project answer questions related to course requirements assignments and grades and responsibilities of the community partner would be uh, laying out project goals and expectations answer questions about the project and offer feedback to the students uh, assign a point person to communicate with students create a plan for the project to continue after students finish so we have some final reminders for you all oh i think uh, oh there is something in the chat that i missed before i guess uh, it was the people i met there that keep coming the volunteer call commitment to okay i think that's a great answer i read that for you it was the people i met there that kept me coming back the volunteer coordinators commitment to educating volunteers on the realities of incarcerated people particularly uh, particularly as it pertains to access to education that's a great experience overall okay so coming back coming back to the final reminders uh you are an ambassador of the university of illinois and the vcu program uh and you need to reach out to us for support if you do not reach out if you miss something up uh just like don't do that just uh, reach out to us and uh, here is our contact information on the slide you can use this email id uh, to reach out to us whenever you have any questions or doubts about any projects or if you are not an, uh, able to connect to any community partner after joining a project and yes so i think we are done with our orientation and we are open to questions you can use the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask us any questions that you have so our first question is how many hours do we need to graduate with a distinction um i believe it's 20 antara correct me if i'm wrong uh i think if they are talking about graduation uh they are in, involved with some service project in a course so i think it depends on your course that how many hours you need to complete uh before graduating and if you are in an open pool project then i think uh the preference is that you complete 20 hours Am I correct, Margarita? I believe it's 20 hours. So yeah, so it'll be different if you're doing service learning, like you have to obviously meet the requirements of the class you're in. Um, I, but I think it's 20 hours for the overall WCU program to graduate with that distinction on your um on your transcripts. Um, yeah, that's right. And then how do we get matched to a community partner or get started? A gift false account. A gift false account is a good way to start. Uh, you already made that account there, um, and I believe there are actually projects already available right now or yes. next week. Uh, they are already available uh, for the open pool. Okay, so um, you can actually go in the gift false, and there's a thing called open pool where there's different projects listed that you can sign up for. Um, and from there, you'll get communication with a community partner. 
Uh, you can just give me your email ID on the chat if you want, then I can forward you an email with all the details of the projects or the link where from where you can directly go to the to the projects and maybe register. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure. I, sh I showed up like a, a few minutes late. So I'm not sure if you addressed this, but um, how, like how many, uh, how much of a time commitment would a service project be? Because I signed up, I registered for multiple, but I'm not really sure how like how um, time uh, constraint or that'll be like how much of my time should I expect to give up to each individual project? Um, I think that's definitely up to your, um, that should be between you and your community partner um, to decide what works best for you. Um, don't overload yourself with a bunch um, if, if that's not going to fit with your schedule. Um, but if, are you in a service learning course or are you just doing it um, through WCU? Uh, no, I, I just signed up through WCU. I, I'm looking for volunteer experience. So that's really what it is. Okay, so then really whatever you can do um, with your community partner or partners, um, just be in communication with them about what you can do and what um, you're able to do if you're going to uh, do volunteer um, commitments with different community partners. Um, so yeah, that's really up to you. If you want to do the 20 hours uh, to get you that distinction uh, for your graduation, you can do that. Um, but I would just say for this semester, for whenever you're doing volunteer, um, be protective of your time and uh, give what you can. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope that was a good answer. Yeah, that was great, thank you. <laughs> Uh, does anyone uh, have any other questions? Uh, something I wanted to highlight too, we talked a little bit um, in the, if you guys aren't familiar with WCU, we talked a little bit about mini grants. Uh, so if you are not doing, um, sorry, mini grants is a program that um, is really made to, so you don't have to pay anything out of pocket. Uh, for your volunteering, for your service experience. Um, so make sure you have a receipt of, for example, um, any materials um, that uh, that you need for your service, um, any transportation costs, as long as you have a receipt, um, you can submit that to us and get that money back. Um, so that's something you're also available to have through, through WCU. Does anybody have other questions? Questions or concerns or comments? No. Uh, if you have any questions later on or something, you can always contact uh, VCU on the email ID that uh, we shared on the screen. I'll also put that email ID on the chat box for you all. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Margarita. Okay, um, well, if no one else has any more questions, uh, thank you so much for um, attending the service, service orientation today. We hope it gave you some good tools and some good um, reflection questions uh, 
to think of um, before your service and during your service and after your service. Um, hope you guys have a good night and a great rest of the semester. If you have any more questions, please reach out to us. Do not hesitate at any time. We will be here to serve you. And yeah, the PowerPoints um, will be shared. There's actually, uh, they're being recorded. So they'll be posted to, we'll send out an email saying like the service um, orientation recording link is available now. Uh, so you'll yeah. be notified of that like within the next week. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Bye, everyone.